And Aspergillus is everywhere in the environment. It's a very common mold. And um, it exists in the environment as spores. And humans uh, breathe them in each and every day. Uh, and uh, usually they don't cause any problems. But the disease that we've been interested in for many years now is invasive aspergillosis. And that affects patients that have very weakened immune systems. It's caused by chemotherapy or transplantation. And uh, that's a serious disease and very hard to diagnose. And it's been extraordinarily difficult to, to treat for a number of reasons. So one of the limitations of studying invasive aspergillosis and developing new diagnostics and therapeutics for humans has been the absence of uh, experimental models and experimental models that are good mimics of human disease. And that's partly because of the complexity of the biology of, of mould infections, which begin as spores, but then develop into invasive forms in the lung, which are completely different and, and difficult to, to, to model in the laboratory. There are a number of in vivo models of invasive aspergillosis. Uh, there are, have been some mouse models that have been developed and are used, uh, but they have significant limitations for a number of different reasons. And there's also a very good rabbit model of invasive aspergillosis, although uh, rabbits are difficult to work with, are very expensive, and there are relatively few laboratories in the world that have this available to them to study new diagnostics and drugs. The concepts behind the in vitro model that was funded by the NC3Rs had its um, uh, beginnings when I was a fellow at the National Institutes of Health and it is a bilayer of human cells, so it's a human model, uh, and it enables human pharmacokinetics, that's the behaviour of drugs in uh, an animal or human's body to be replicated and so has the potential to be a faithful mimic of human disease. In our uh, work uh, to characterise drug concentration effect relationships uh, that can take anything up to 2,000 mice, uh, depending on the complexity of the, the agent concerned, the drug concerned. And uh, this therefore has the potential uh, to uh, replace uh, all of those mice. Breakpoints are um, an indication to a clinician whether they, it's safe to use an agent to treat a particular organism or not. And uh, they're mandated by law in Europe and in the United States, and they can be very difficult to ascertain. It can be very difficult to know whether a drug can be safely used or not. So we've developed, we used the model that was funded by the NC3Rs to develop breakpoints for a drug called voriconazole, which is widely used in the UK, Europe, and the world. Uh, to fulfil what are legal requirements to set breakpoints for this agent against Aspergillus. Well, the work that uh, was funded by the NC3Rs and the model that was developed is now being used to further collaborations uh, with other investigators in, in, in Canada primarily. Uh, and has also been used to secure uh, research grants in the United States and also for novel uh, antifungal agents that have been developed in the northwest of England.